Hey folks, so today we're going to be discussing spiritual materialism. What is it and how can we deal with it? Coming up. So I'm Doug Smith. I'm study director at the Secular Buddhist Association. That's secularbuddhism.org. And if you're interested in helping to promote a wiser and a kinder and a less stress-filled world, consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, we have talks like this out once or twice a week, uh, every Monday and most Thursdays, so if you sign up you won't miss them. So spiritual materialism. It's an idea that uh, originated with uh, Chugyam Trungpa, who is a Tibetan teacher and a book uh, of the same title. And basically the idea is that we tend sometimes to take a materialistic attitude towards spiritual or ethical kinds of enterprises. So in the same way that uh, with literal materialism, physical materialism, we can tend to want to accumulate objects, accumulate things, buy things, own things. In the same way, we can come to this kind of enterprise with a mind of ownership, where we basically think of our path as one of collecting things, collecting knowledge, collecting teachers, good teachers, collecting retreats, collecting certain kinds of attainments, uh, rather than a path of putting these kinds of things to work, really, in our lives. A teacher of mine talks about how when he goes on retreats, and he goes on a number of them, sometimes at the beginning of the retreat uh, he'll be surrounded by people who are talking about all the other retreats they've been on, sort of comparing each other, one-upping each other about, I was on this retreat, I was with this teacher, uh, I was on a month-long retreat, I was on a two-month-long retreat, and so we know that those kinds of things do happen at times. Now I think there are, in general, three different ways that spiritual materialism can manifest itself in our lives. The first of these I think we could call a kind of clinging to possessions, various kinds of possessions that we may feel we have ownership over. Uh, we may feel that we have ownership over, for instance, our own attainments, or our own uh, diplomas. We may have ownership over statues that we own. That is literal ownership. But also, we may feel that having gone to a particular school, having gone to a particular place, on its own gives us a kind of spiritual attainment. And these may be kind of subtle psychological impulses rather than something that's very gross and obvious. So we have to, it's something we have to keep an eye on in our own selves. The second way that, these, that, these, uh, that spiritual materialism may manifest is what I would say a kind of clinging to views. That is, we may identify with uh, our view of being a Buddhist, for instance, or being a secular Buddhist, or being a secularist, or our ideas about particular philosophical issues within Buddhism, say, uh, being a Mahayana Buddhist, or being a Theravada Buddhist, or being a non-dualist Buddhist, or being a uh, Buddhist who believes in the early uh, texts. And we may think that by having these views, that alone is enough to uh, give us a kind of spiritual advance, and that ownership of these views or clinging to these views is in our best interest. That may be our feeling, but that itself is a kind of spiritual materialism. The approach to uh, an ethical path or a spiritual path, if you like, that involves the ownership or identification with particular things, or in this case, views. The third way that this may manifest is in a clinging to particular kinds of emotional states that we've achieved, or uh, states of meditation that we've achieved. So some people may cling to or feel an ownership of, uh, say, the ability to achieve uh, jhanic states, jhanic states being states of bliss or other kinds of uh, uh, positive mental states that occur within uh, deep meditation, within a very focused meditation over long periods of time. Uh, and I've got a video about um, uh, this kind of concentration meditation, which you can see if you're interested in that. But we can cling to that. We can feel that uh, the mere ability to achieve those states, or the having achieved them in the past, gives us a kind of a one-up on other people. We may also uh, cling to or feel a possession of certain kinds of states that we've achieved in the path ha past having to do with, let's say, the sublime. So we may hear of people, or we, we may ourselves at times talk about how we achieve such a deep, uh, sublime state, uh, whether it's in meditation or perhaps out in the countryside when we're on a walk in the woods, or maybe it's going to uh, a museum and seeing a beautiful painting or a beautiful sculpture, or going to uh, a concert of some kind and hearing great music, and we feel that we touch something sublime during that experience. 
and that that experience, collecting that experience as it were, gives us a kind of a spiritual attainment which makes us uh, more spiritually mature or advanced than people who haven't had that kind of sublime experience. So in this way we can cling to these three things. Uh, we can cling literally to possessions, things that we own. Uh, we can cling to views, things that we believe. Or we can cling to, let's say, experiences, things that things that we experience or emotional states that we're in, that we, ha or that we have been in in the past. And what unifies these kinds of states is, I would say, a, a mind of collecting, a mind of ownership, a mind of possession. That's why Chogyam Trungpa called this spiritual materialism, because it's a kind of ownership mind, the same way that we may feel that we are better people by having more money in the bank, or by having a bigger house, or a better car. In the same way we may think that we're spiritually more advanced people or ethically more advanced people because we've got these possessions, uh, whether they be literal physical possessions or other kinds of possessions in terms of the mind and in, in the sense of views or experiences. And this we should obviously contrast with what I think is a much more uh, true way of looking at, at the spiritual path or the ethical path, which is that the achievements come in how we behave and how we in fact approach the world and in particular, in an approach to the world which involves uh, non-clinging, which involves non-possession of the world, which involves an equanimous state, which is, relatively speaking, without stress, a way of approaching the world which is kind, which is compassionate, rather than being one that is uh, cruel or unkind. And finally, a way, of, a way of dealing with the world which is wise, as opposed to one that is unwise. And ownership of things, whatever things they may be, really don't enter into the question as to how we behave in the world now, in the present moment. I think we all know of people who have had ownership over, over all of these things. Ownership of actual objects, ownership of, of very good views, ownership of great experiences in the past, who ne nevertheless can't quite get to that next level. But I don't mean for you to use this kind of, uh, these insights about spiritual materialism outside, that is to say, by judging other people, the best way to use them is to use them with yourself. How do you approach uh, the world? How do you approach these kinds of, of attainments? I'd, I'd actually be interested to hear about that, to hear your comments down, down below in the, in the comments section, uh, because I think it's something that we can approach individually, thinking of it as our own path, and how to make our own path actually more effective. So I hope that's been useful to you. Uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm really glad to have you here. And if you're coming back for more, I'm so glad to have you back. Wonderful to read all the good comments and questions uh, in past videos. Uh, I think you should all read them as well, because you can learn a lot from them. So bye-bye, and I'll catch you on the next one.